this time. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not be fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There's a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cut off the spear in sunder. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. On this day of December, the 13th, 2021, we are giving God thanks for the life of Ernest Livingstone Levy Graves. Live a full life and we give God thanks and praise. We want to acknowledge in our congregation, our beloved Prime Minister, Honorable Mayor Amor Motley, welcome to our church. God bless. Also want to acknowledge our former Deputy Prime Minister, former Acting Governor General, Sir Philip Graves. Welcome. Also want to welcome the President of the Democratic Labour Party, uh, Ms. Voldi Pisa. Welcome. And also on the platform, we have former President of the East Caribbean Conference, Pastor Everett Hubbard, and also our current President, Pastor R. Danforth Francis. To everyone, we say welcome. God bless you. And, our, and on behalf of the constituency, St. Vince constituency, and the wider constituency of Barbados, you want to express our profound sympathies to Stephen. Uh, may God bless you, strengthen you, take life easy, trust God, and keep holding on to his promises. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Once again, we say welcome to one and all. And as we see life and how life goes, may daily, may we take an inventory of our lives, consecrate our lives to the, to the Lord God every day, because we do not know what the future has in store. Welcome one, welcome all. Our hymn of praise, number 462, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. We, we remain standing as we put our voices together and sing this lovely hymn. 462. Salvation, air of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washing His blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praise my Savior. Praise my Savior. All the This is my story. Praise the Lord. 
Eternal Father and God, it is with joy in our hearts that we've come to you, for whenever we have the opportunity of talking with you, it brings happiness to our hearts. You who created us and gave us life, you are the one who continues to guide and to protect and to see us through the number of days of our lives. We've come this afternoon to recognize and to offer to you the one who a stalwart in the Seventh-day Adventist Church for many years, one who have made the contribution to his nation, to his community, and to his family. Lord, we recognize that you have given us life, and you have said it is appointed unto man, set three score and ten, and if by virtue of strength we live longer, showing that not only your will, but our cooperation with you is necessary. Our dear friend Livy is gone. And we know we, he will be missed. We ask the Heavenly Father that you will bring comfort to the bereaved family and all the friends and loved ones to us as a church. We ask the Heavenly Father that you will continue to guide and direct us. For we who remain are in a more dangerous position than he himself. Because now he's beyond the tempter's power. He's taken rest. And the next moment he will know will be the resurrection. We believe that he died in Christ. Therefore, we believe that he would rise again to live eternally with you. The challenge for all of us today, will we be there? And so, may this service then be an opportunity to challenge us, be, be an opportunity for us to grasp the hope of that resurrection, where there will be that human reunion, where the night of human suffering would have passed, and we've entered into that realm of bliss. So bless us all. Bless the service. We ask you to bless our prime minister who is with us. Bless our country. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for the scriptures uh, given at this time by Lisa Graves Richards. A reading from the book of Psalm, chapter 116, verses 12 to 15 and verse 17. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. 
I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Can you be seated? We shall now have a musical selection by Elder Richard Broom. And this will be followed by a number of tributes. And while we're here in the congregation, just remain with your mask on. Keep on your mask. And um, by God's grace, um, we, we still have to follow all the protocols. Uh, sanitize, you well sanitize the information given. And uh, by God's grace, uh, let us uphold law and order and longevity for Barbados. All right? So we continue to sanitize. Keep our distance by God's grace. And feel like God is somehow forgotten That you are faced with circumstances you can't get through But now it seems there's no way out And you're going under but God's proven time and time again He'll take care of you And he'll do it again He'll do it again If you just take a look at where you are now And where you've been well, hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may, but he'll do it again. God knows you're going through and knows you're hurting. You see, he knows just how your heart has been broken in two. But he's the God of the stars, the sun, and the sea, and he is your father. He can calm the storm, and he'll find a way to fix this for you, and he'll do it again, he'll do it again. If you just take a look at where you are now, and where you've been, well, hasn't he always come through? For you, he's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. Oh, he's still God, and he will not fail you. Oh, he's still God. And he will not change. Yes, he's still God, and he's fighting for you. Just like Moses, just like Daniel, just like Shadrach, Meshach, the Bendigo, you'll do it again. 
do it again. So just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. For hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. You may not know how, you may not know when, you may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. He'll do it again. Amen, amen. Uh, we have a number of tributes. First, we are from Mr. Peter Williams from the Barbers Light and Power. And then we have Miss Priscilla Prevost, care of Norma Graves. Then Norma Graves, then Adriani Foster, Sandra Ramsey, then Ian Gittings, in this order. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Prime Minister, Sir Philip. Uh, family, Stephen. Uh, it is certainly my honor and privilege to be here to uh, give a tribute to our former colleague, um, Livy. Livy served as a director of the Barbados Light and Power Company Limited from 1970 and subsequently as a director of the parent company Light and Power Holdings in America Caribbean from its formation in 1997 until his retirement from the board in 2015. I think you can do the math, that's a long, long time. A former airline executive with the regional Caribbean BWIA, Livy brought his vast management experience to his role on the board, which, when coupled with his thoughtful manner, warm smile, and ready charm, made him an invaluable member and contributor, contributor to the board's deliberations. Livy's helped steer the company through several challenging times especially in the late 1970s and early 80s when the company was hard pressed to keep up with the rapid growth in demand for electricity and there were frequent outages. Through good times and bad, he was always proud to be associated with the company. During his ten tenure, he would have seen several changes, new developments in technology, introduction of total quality management, changes in the majority shareholder, and he always took these changes in stride. Livy always stood for what was right. He was a staunch advocate of strong governance, supporting several initiatives by the board to modernize its practices and serving on several of the board's committees. He was always approachable and willing to listen. He provided wise counsel for the management team over the many years of his service to the company and I personally can attest to this because I visited him, Gibbs, had the pleasure of sitting on his little patio porch many times, chatting with him, enjoying his lovely garden, which I know he treasured, uh, and getting the benefit of Livy's wealth of knowledge and, as I said, his wise counsel. Board of Management of Leighton Paul, Mayor of Caribbean, I ex on behalf of the board, we extend condolences to his son, Stephen, entire Graves family, all his friends. Barbius has lost a patriot and a true son of the soil. May he rest in peace. Amen. I am speaking on behalf of Mrs. Priscilla Prevo, as shown in your, in your programs. Condolences, tribute for the family of Livy Graves. 
Greetings to everyone present in person and virtually. From Mrs. Priscilla Prevo, the health coordinator of the East Caribbean Conference. Mrs. Prevo's message states, on behalf of myself, my family, and the health ministries of the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, I extend condolences to the family of Brother Livy Graves. My first encounter with Brother Graves goes back to somewhere about the year 2003, when I received a letter from him inviting, to me, inviting me to make a presentation at the Checker Hall Seventh Adventist Church Health Fair on the grounds of the Checker Hall playing field. My name came up as one of the recommendations from Dr. Hines, Dr. Hans Deal who was unable to make it to Barbados at the time. I was happy to serve at that mem memorable health fair planned by Brother Livy. Brother Chris was a believer in the Seventh-day Adventist health message. He served the Checker Hall Church as health ministries leader, formerly health and temperance leader for an extended period. When I returned next to Checker Hall Church years later as health ministries coordinator, I missed him and inquired about him and was told he was no longer able to attend services on a regular basis. Arrangement was made with his cousin, Sister Norma Graves, I am that person, for a home visit. I recall the interesting conversation we had. He still shared his passion for proper health practices and had a level of independence. The conversation revealed that his heart was still definitely with the health message, as given to us by the spirit of prophecy. Brother Livy has accomplished much, and he did what he could under God's leadings. May he rest peacefully until the resurrection morning when Jesus comes to claim his own. Okay, the next tribute comes from, from me. It includes that of my brother, Dr. Don Graves, and his wife, Marjorie, who had to travel overseas. From my sister-in-law, Thelda, in the United States, who became very close with Livy, being married to his cousin, the late Dr. Timothy Graves, my brother, and who, and it includes the host of cousins and family members of our Grace family here in Barbados and those overseas. My family and our Uncle Herbert's family became closer to Livy when he would come over to Trinidad as he worked there with BWIA. We remember Livy as determined, having a purpose, at times positive, more so when he sees the picture from his angle. One thing, however, in the end, he will consider your point of view, if he thinks that is it, in whatever Livy was given to do, whether at work or at church, he always tried to do his best. Once he accepted the position, know that he's going to do his best. I could mention times when our family would get together. Uncle Herbert's children loved to come over to Barbados, I along with them, and they loved cousin Livy. They all send their condolences. I heard from some um, recently, from Marjorie, from Irwin, from Vi, and Lynette particularly. One story told to me by Livy. He went to visit my dad, his uncle Eric, who was lying on his deathbed at that time. For the last time, this uncle, a retired Seventh-day Adventist minister, appealed to Livy to return to the church and recommit his life fully to God, his first love. My dad died not too long after in September 1999. And Livy told me that my dad's words kept pulling at the cords of his heart until, praise God, he surrendered and asked to be rebaptized. And he gave me the date. I can't remember, but I know it was the end of 1999. And I flew over from Trinidad to be here with him and for him and witness his baptism in the sea at Spikestown. 
I could not miss that important day for Livy. That was an important time for Livy's life as he recommitted his life to God. The lesson I learned is that no one is perfect. We all make our mistakes in our lives, but God is so good. God sends people on the spot at the right time, and God himself is there, always ready to guide us along. What I admired in recent years with Livy's were Livy's thoughts, however, and desire to attend that church that he knew and grew up as a boy. He remembered the members of the Checker Hall Seventh Day Adventist Church, that very church he loved from boyhood. Towards the end, his mind could not pinpoint the correct days of the week or the time of the day. All he seemed to be interested in was to drive to that very little church where he grew up, where he accepted Jesus as a little boy. To me, what is important is although he was away from church for years, he returned. Livy proved true to the text in the Bible. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he is not going to part from it. It doesn't. That isn't true for everyone exactly, but it seemed to be true for Livy as he held on to God and his precious promises to the very end. God is a judge. God forgives. Let us keep faithful to God. Let us strive, plan, and aim to meet Livy and our believers and loved ones again on that great resurrection morn when Jesus comes again. But we must keep faithful. We all wish to tell you, Stephen, to keep strong, to remember that you did your best for your dad. We will continue to support you and pray for you. We are here for you, don't forget that and encourage you to keep God as your friend and provider in every situation of life. May God continue to bless us all as we aim to keep ready for Jesus' return. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm reading this tribute on behalf of a Mr. Ian Gittins, who lives in Scotland, a former colleague of Mr. Graves. It reads as follows. I first met Livy, as he was affectionately known, when he was about 19 years working for the local Air France agent. He was just about to leave Pan Am Airways, where he had a stellar career, to join BYAC, no British Airways. I was the novice joining the reservations in 1965. About a year later, Livy was appointed district sales manager, a major role in the Caribbean. In 1966, BOAC had a vacancy in sales for someone to work with Livy covering the Eastern Caribbean. I applied for and was successful again the job. Livy became my boss, and what a boss he was. One of the best mentors I've ever had. He taught me many disciplines. When he was chairman of the Barbados Marbling Corporation, we worked together trying to get IATA rates for local produce in Barbados, in England, as a first. When I fell ill in London with a ruptured appendix while on a course there, I flew back to Barbados, and Livy was the first to congratulate me on passing the exam. About five or six years later, Livy was head hunted to lead the team at BWIA. I went with him there as a cargo sales manager reporting to him. What a wonderful time we had. He was a very great and intelligent man, and what a dresser he was. Thankfully, we spoke over the years up to 2015. And he ends off by saying, Livy, I shall have you in my mind forever. God bless you. Much love. 
y en 10 minutos. Okay, Sandra Ramsey. It's running, it's running faster, followed by Sandra Ramsey, right? No Sandra Ramsey. Okay. After this will be musical selection by Kelly Cadogan. Good evening, everyone. I can't say it's a pleasure to be here, but it's certainly a privilege to speak on behalf of Mr. Livy Graves. My first recollection of Mr. Livy Graves was from my High Commission days. He was head of BWE and would visit the office to meet with the High Commissioner on the BWE Barbados Agreement. Some of you may remember the days of no flying fish, no BWE. The few times he visited the office of the High Commission, I remember the ladies looking forward to his visit. He was Mr. Dapa Attire. Fast forward to 2000 when I met him again because of my professional relationship with his son, Stephen. He had retired and was working with Wildwood Health Institute on natural health issues as one of his church projects, and he would visit the office for assistance in sending emails or faxes to the institute. At the same time, he never failed to give advice on the vitamins he thought were good for me. I had the benefit of being in his presence a few times in social settings, and I have to say he was always well-dressed and groomed, well-groomed. When he entered, attended the Platinum's Christmas lunch in 2019, Mr. Dapper was dressed in his bright yellow shirt, his hat, and his matching pants and shoes. You'll see the picture in the collage in center page. As I got to know him better, he loved to talk about his younger days and it always brought a sparkle to his eyes when he spoke about Stephen. He shared stories about him being away from Stephen when he was in Trinidad and Stephen was a kid in Barbados. One particular story he related more than once was when he was working in Trinidad and Stephen called him from Barbados about his Latin school homework. During the conversation, he said he could sense Stephen's sadness, and he asked Stephen, do you miss me, son? He said that answer led to his relocation to Barbados. Another story he repeated was when he, relocated to Barbados, when he was relocated to Barbados, and he took his family to visit the house the company had assigned to him. He recounted Stephen's commitment Stephen's comment, sorry. Daddy, I don't like this house. He said that also led to the family decision not to accept the house. Mr. Graves loved his gardening and his plants and was always willing to give his useful tips on gardening. I recall once he sat looking at a garden and said, you know, this garden is missing something Bajan. As he was in his latter years, he could not pinpoint how to make the garden Bajan. My niece, Ariana, asked me to share this as she has returned to Trinidad. I was lucky enough for the opportunity to meet and interact with Mr. Graves. For the short time I have spent with him, he has certainly left a mark on me eternally. I met him two years ago at a Sunday luncheon. He enjoyed sitting on the patio and looking at the plants, and especially the Julie mango tree. He was great company, and I listened to him talk about his days growing up in St. Lucie. As a non bajan this and other conversations were fascinating to me. Our fun time was seeking him for ice cream on the South Coast when his eyes lit up like a kid. I sincerely appreciated my time spent with him, having him for lunch, ice cream trips, and most of all, the unforgettable conversations. I'm very grateful and blessed for the opportunity to have met him he was truly a gem and left a memorable mark on me, which I will never forget. About those ice cream, 
Before he left to go to the nursing home in July 2021, we visited him and Ariana wanted to take some goodies. So of course, ice cream was on the top of the list. He seemed to have been struggling to recognize us with our mask on and his fading memory. But we did see a bit of sparkle in his eyes when we mentioned he, we brought ice cream for him. When we are faced with situations like the one we are here for today, we search everywhere to find the perfect memory, the best biblical verse, or the most appropriate words or poem as though they are locked in some secret vault which we have no access to. At times like these, to me, there are no appropriate words. Mr. Graves, your physical body remains, but your soul moved on to begin life in paradise, a journey that your earthly life has prepared you for. You have left behind a legacy, your name, your memory, your dedication to God, your family, and your business reputation. And most of all, a lasting impression on those who were fortunate to be in your company and converse with you, like Ariana and myself. You have completed what God placed you on earth for, and you, have, you are now ready to start your next journey. Rest in peace, Mr. Graves. Thank you. As I lay me down, heaven hear me now, I am lost without a cause, after giving it my all, winter storms have come, and darkened my sun. After all that I've been through, who on earth can I turn to? I look to you, I look to you. After all, my strength is gone. In you, I can be strong. I look to you. To you and when melodies are gone and you are hear a song I look to you about to lose my breath there's no more fighting left Sinking to rise no more I'm searching for that open door And every road that I've taken Has led to my regret And I don't know if I'm gonna make it Nothing to do but lift my head. I look to you. I look to you. After all, my strength is gone. In you, I can be strong. I look to you. I look to you. And when melodies are gone, in you I hear a song, 
Minister of the Republic, good evening. We're very glad to see everyone here, family members, and those who are abroad. Stephen has asked me to present the eulogy which he has prepared. So the weight has fallen on my shoulders, and uh, we will give this eulogy of a very distinguished Christian man. Ernest Livingston Graves known as Livy, was born just over 89 years ago on April 15, 1932, and was first raised in Checker Hall, St. Lucy, next to the Seventh-day Adventist ch Church, which he attended up until the time of his passing. His father, Rensford, a hard-working, thrifty gentleman owned a blacksmith shop located in Spikestown and grew various food crops at Checker Hall, including sugar cane. I should stop and say that Rensford Graves and two other lay people, O.S. Walker and a gentleman from Guyana, S.T. Jones, were the persons that held the crusade in my little quarter, resulting in the establishment of this church. So Rensford Graves had a pivotal role in the history of this church. So we are not here by chance. The family later acquired Allman's Plantation, which well, was a stone's throw away, and which became my grandparents' home, where Stephen recalls visiting and devouring the fruits grown. His, his parents, Rainsford and Ira, raised four other children, daughter Randolph, a dentist, Frank, Leopold, and Juanita, and Juanita is still alive and resides in Canada. Rani Lee and Dad were very sociable persons within their community and were well spoken of by all. You will also note the extensive list of cousins in the obituary, which was all only restricted to the space allocated in the announcements. The Graves family was and continues to be a tightly bonded one until this day. Stephen seemed to recall his dad boasting of the amount of walking he had to do 
from his home to the St. Lucie's Church Boys School, located half a mile from the St. Lucie's Parish Church in the compound of what is now the Dara Jordan uh, Secondary School. He had to walk the long road. That road was called Long. It was between Bourbon and St. Lucie's Church, and there was no shelter when the rain fell. He was successful in his examinations to enter the Parry School, which later became the Cochin Parry School, and he then went on to Harrison College while boarding at the Harris family in Three Side Road during the week, and that was very common for persons living in the countryside to board in Bridgetown because there was no transport after six o'clock. I am told he was a very a decent fast bowler in his youth, and every Saturday he headed to Barrows with his cousins to play cricket. Livy often spoke fondly of visiting his grandparents, Ernest and Adele Graves, especially on Sabbath afternoons after church with his cousins Calvin, Philip, who's here with us, David, and Radcliffe. Livy gleefully related one incident when he and those four cousins filled their pockets with ground nuts from their grandparents' storehouse. Only one of them was caught, and you can guess who it wasn't. Dad enjoyed watching and playing cricket and football, although personally I can only remember him being a fan of cricket. I am told by teaching at Kojampari, he actually captained the football team. He was the Pele of CP. After graduating from Harrison College, Livy taught at the now amalgamated Courage and Parry School from 1956 for a couple of years before moving on to Combermere. Over the years, I've met several of his Combermere students, such as George Haynes and David Stewart, who always spoke glowingly of the discipline he maintained in and outside of class. His approach to teaching subjects such as Latin and his natural ability to encourage his students to learn. Without exception, I was always reminded of his sharp and dapper attire, which he kept until the time of his death. After his teaching days, that dad embarked on a career change and took advantage of employment opportunities to work in the airline industry. First with Pan American, then with BOAC, British Overseas Air Service, in the marketing department, and BOAC is now British Airways, and finally with BWIA based in Trinidad, now Caribbean Airlines. As a result of his dedication and hard work and results achieved at BW, he was promoted on a few occasions, finally retiring as executive vice president of the Caribbean region. This was a major achievement as this position was generally reserved for Trinidadians. He was proud of recruiting and mentoring airline executives such as Mr. David Stewart and of mentoring the likes of John Osborne, Ian Gittins, Bentley Roach, Ion Curtin, Marianne Walker, Rita Wilson, and Judy Duran. And I'm informed he always showed personal interest in his staff development. And like a teacher, he wanted you to do better. Judy says he was always very perceptive, even if the staff did not report to him directly. He had an exceptional ability to know what was happening around him, like, like a teacher father figure. Dad was a catalyst for motivating staff to further their education 
and developing themselves by enrolling in various training programs, for example, BIMAC and motivational speaking courses. However, don't be fooled, he will chastise you when he had to do so. Dad and his wife, Stephen's mom, the late Enid Graves, were married in 1956, and Stephen was their destiny two years later. To the best of his knowledge, they lived at Tudor Bridge initially until they moved to Highgate Park. As a father, Livy was the traditional breadwinner of the family, a role which he proudly accepted and took seriously. He was strong-willed, yet modest, serious, yet he had a fun side, always encouraging others to develop and improve themselves. Stephen says he did not lack the basic things in life, and being the only offspring, he was surely privileged in some ways. That said, it was a loving and nurturing family environment where sharing and caring for others was the norm. He would not have discussed it with me, but it was evident he had prepared for my future education and development, but never suggested to me what career path I should follow. To be truthful, the airline industry rubbed off on me, but the management opportunities in Barbados within that sector were and are relatively limited. Spending time as a family was just as special to him as it was when he was growing up. On Sundays, we alternated be between going to the beach and visiting my grandparents at Allman's Plantation. We were picking dunks, plums, and cherries was a welcome treat for me. As far as swimming was concerned, I only had to watch how Dad did swim out of Stephen's deck. There was no YouTube videos in those days. No lessons were required. In Stephen's judgment, he is a better person for the values he has instilled in me during my lifetime. Honesty, integrity, determination, empathy, and kindness, respect and love for others, to name a few. Livy, my dad, has certainly had a positive influence on my brain, and I will leave it to others to judge what characteristics he and I share. After he was rebaptized in the Seventh day Adventist Church at Chaka Hall, he played a significant role in all the church activities and as its health leader, invited the Wildwood Institute of Georgia, United States to showcase their skills on health reform, on reversing diabetes, a notion disputed by some of the health authorities in Barbados at the time, but now accepted by most. The, mo the importance of changing to a plant-based diet and the positive impact it could have on one's health. Livy served, in addition, as stewardship leader, church board member, and assistant Sabbath school class teacher. For several years, he led the Chakal Church in collecting the most funds for the annual In Gathering Appeal campaign, where the public was invited to contribute to the community outreach Good Samaritan activities of the church. He was loyal to the church to the end. He was well-loved and respected in the congregation. Livy served on a number of important boards of local institutions, namely the Barbados Marketing Corporation, the Barbados Light and Power Company, the Barbados Stores Board, under Sir Wesley Hall as minister, and on an immigration board during the last government, and as a former president of the GSEs. Many of us would give anything for that kind of resume. A high court judge described my father as a powerhouse. 
and his personal hairdresser said he was a fantastic gentleman. I rest my case. Livy was a hard-working, compass a compassionate gentleman to everyone and deserved the success and rich life he enjoyed. He taught me many, many things, but I think mostly he gave us the ability to know that if you really put your mind to something, anything is impossible and never be affra afraid to give anything a go. Dad, you had a good life, and you probably were not aware that you were a guiding light for many. You have served your country well, you have represented your family well, and you have served your God with humility and distinction. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will say you over much. Enter into the joy of your master's kingdom. May your soul peace, rest peacefully and may you rise in glory until we meet again in another place. At this time, we want to invite Stephen to give the appreciation, if you're able, Stephen. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming, uh, Prime Minister. Thank you for taking the time. We, we know you, you, you don't sleep, so it really is a, a privilege to, for you to be able to take the time. I really appreciate it. Um, the the Motleys and the Parises go way back into the bridge days, so um, the families go way back. So it's, um, it's um, not surprising that you took the time to. So Elliot, is, um, he doesn't leave home very often these days, and um, um, Prime Minister's mom is, is traveling, so really, really grateful to have your presence. Um, I just want to appreciate, um, thanks and give thanks and appreciation for the many persons. You don't want to leave out anyone, but there are some that stand out where I could not, I could not let the service end without um, representing him and representing myself. So, um, so let me thank everyone in the range of my voice for taking the time to join us at this Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving service whether physically or online. Dad would certainly have shed a few tears to see his family and friends here to celebrate his rich and wonderful life. For their role in planning or preparing for today's service, we are grateful to cousin and funeral director Jeffrey Graves and his organization, the Checker Hall, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Man and the Quarter, Seventh-day Adventist Church, and the St. Lucy Parish Church for facilitating us. Um, also for today's um, proceedings, we are appreciative to Norma Graves, Indrani Foster, Sharon Allen, and Lisa Richards for their selfless service and support. To Ms. Winnie Morris of Faith Nursing Services and her nurses, may God bless you all for your wonderful and caring services over the past two years. To Ms. Linda Boyne of Ocean View Nursing Home, where he was, where he spent uh, four months, thank you for your team's love and care as well. To Jeffrey Evelyn of Homestead Nursing Home, special thanks to Paulette and, and Deborah. To jo Dr. Jacqueline King and to Dr. Mia Robinson of Sports and Physical Therapy for improving his health and physical well-being when they started to um, provide services at the nursing home. To Indrani and her family for their continued prayers and encouragement. To Ashel, Ashel Griffith and Sandra Boyce for their personal care and attention at the residence. Sir Philip Graves, Radliff Hinkson, Norma Graves, Dr. Don Graves, Wismar Graves. Your wisdom, knowledge, and love are powerful. To the faithful members of the SDA, Cheka Hall Church, who, share fellowship, who shared fellowship with Dad every Saturday, you are an inspiration and motivation for my, for my father. To family and friends, including his former hardworking colleagues at BWIA and Delight and Power, my heartfelt thanks for blessing my father's life and for making it 
that much more fulfilling. Thanks to everyone for your love, friendship, prayers, and support, particularly over the past few years when it mattered most. Our conversations, your WhatsApp and email messages will forever remain in my memory. I wish you all everlasting peace, love, good health, and most importantly, God's guidance and protection.
Time is going by very quickly. I've entitled this presentation Only Dust in the Wind, except for Calgary. Only Dust in the Wind, except for Calgary. You know, not too long ago, when I attended a funeral, there were a number of individuals ahead of me. He called them. We won't go into the evidence. But now as I attend the funerals, funerals, I am in the category of the old folks. And I notice in recent days, so many of those who are passing are in the late 80s or early 90s. Yeah, and I began to count and I counted up to 12 of my friends in the last year and I stopped counting. You know, one of them was a brother of mine that I had to bury right here from this church. And this Friday, another friend of mine, a classmate of mine. There's so many just going, it makes you pretty humble. So, today, when I attend the funeral, the majority in attendance is still comprised of seniors and colleagues of the deceased but the change that has taken place is as i've said before i am now an old folk a senior in my late 80s looking at the 90s every time we attend such a service such as this it is a vivid reminder of our vulnerability it is a reminder to all of us, or should be a warning to all of us, that everything we touch dies. The trees we plant die. Hmm? The doctors and nurses that take care of us, they too die. I spent all night last night and half today at the hospital. I just came for this particular occasion here because I was committed to it. Animals we love and care for die. Even politicians die. Those who sacrifice so much to accumulate so much have to leave it behind for someone else to either squander it or spend it properly. In the Old Testament, in Job 14, 2, Job describes a human life as a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth as a flower in the morning and by the evening he's gone. James in the New Testament has a little different analogy. He says human beings life is like a, a, a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. And so a very important question which we must ask ourselves today is, who am I? Why am I here? What purpose do I serve while I'm here? I have found another challenge in this poem composed by Kerry Lindgren entitled, Dust in the Wind. I close my eyes only for a moment and the moment is gone. All my dreams pass before my eyes, a curiosity, dust in the wind. Some old song, just a drop of water in the end of the sea. All we do crumbles to the ground, though we refuse to see. Dust in the wind, 
All we are is dust in the wind. Don't hang on. Nothing lasts forever. But the earth and the sky, it slips away. All your money won't another minute buy. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. One of the things we enjoy doing as human beings who have not seen each other for a long time is to boast about our achievements or the achievement of our loved ones, our children. And sometimes we have a lot of good news to share. We can now communicate instantaneously with anyone in any part of the world, in the air, on land, under the sea. And there are some who want to convince us that they even communicate with the dead. We have become so smart. We can send human beings into space and other planets and are planning to set up residence someplace in outer space also in the future. The human mind has demonstrated that it has the capacity to soar to great heights and plumb the depths of the ocean. With these minds, we can make some wonderful things as well as some things from mass destruction of other human beings. With our minds, we can violate the laws of nature and then manufacture cures to clean up our own mess. With these minds, we can create a handled Messiah in which the hallelujah or praise the Lord is repeated some 167 times in that hallelujah chorus alone. The same minds can produce lyrics about how to hurt and to kill others as well as to praise Satan. We use our minds to redefine who we think we are or who we want to be or how we got here in the first place and the purpose for which we were made. We choose to ignore that we were uniquely created, made in the image and likeness of our Creator, made to give glory and honor to God our Creator and to love our fellow human beings. We have tried to change the perspective given us at our creation, a perspective that established relationship. We are relating to our Creator. We were relating to our Creator. He talked with us and we listened and communicated back with Him. God was a communicating God and we were a responding creation. Adam and Eve, his wife, were in a relationship, one without fear or shame. Mankind was in a synchronized relationship with nature and the things of nature yielded their properties for the benefit and longevity of human beings. Everything was so good. But with our minds, we explored the forbidden and changed the formula for our happiness and our well-being. Now we want to live our own, on our own without any reference to our Creator or responsibility to care for the things of nature or our fellow human beings. Our hate had replaced our love and harmony. Death had replaced life and happy relationships. If only our scientists could find a pill to cure our aging and to stop all diseases and our dying, we could live without a desire for a relationship with God, our Creator. Science would be our savior and redeemer, and plastic surgeons could keep those wrinkles and sagging muscles under control. Now, when I was a boy, long time ago, a funeral was a very sad occasion. Shops closed their doors as a sign of respect as the cortege passed by. Men took off their hats because they used to wear hats and caps in those days, and they bowed in respect. Around the grave, tears were shed and people expressed their grief with tears and sounds of mourning because of the loss. Today, the funeral is a celebration of life. The graveside is like a picnic in the park. Notices are sent out, no mourning colors. It's almost as if you want to are in a denial that there is real death. Invariably, before we leave the church, the body is in the casket, but we have found ways of having the person already in heaven, looking down on the family and friends in their grief and sorrow. The eulogists today exercise a terrific amount of power. Michael Jackson, you can remember that, I remember it. Michael Jackson was up there two in heaven while his funeral was being conducted. John Rivers was there making jokes and entertaining whether a funeral was 
in progress on Earth. Michael Marshall, a West Indian fast bowler, is there too, along with Bob Marley. We have found ways of getting there without Calvary and without Christ. What this tells us is that there is in all of us a desire for that better world. A place without death and sadness and grief and fear. Unfortunately, we want to get it without change of life and conduct. Without recognizing that we must first die to sin before we die. That confession of sins and acceptance of Christ as our sin bearer is a requirement. Death is that one thing we have not yet conquered. We have become vulnerable and afraid of death because it seems so terminal. It does not discriminate. It attracts young and old, rich and poor. It is colorblind and is not influenced by status or anything else. This kind of power in the hands of our enemy causes us to be afraid of death. Sin walks around with a checkbook in its pocket and is always ready to pay its bills. Romans 6, 23 says, the wages of sin is death. That is a very powerful statement. We can see the evidence of its success all around. Every country in the world has its hospital, its morgue, its cemetery. Our once beautiful planet has become one massive cemetery. But I am thankful that that statement, the wages of sin is death, is not the beginning and the end. There is a but that comes after that sentence. And the but says, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. The gift of God is eternal life. The greatest Christmas gift came wrapped in oversized clothing and in the clothing was Jesus Christ coming to offer eternal life in the place of death. The words of the song, I love life and I want to live. Now here is that second chance to eternal life. It is a gift. It comes from Jesus. You can't pay for it. You can't bowl well enough or fast enough to get it. You don't have to be entertained for it. Tithes and offerings don't achieve it. You just stand up and go to Jesus and say, Here I am. I'm accepting your gift that you have brought for me. Jesus continues to clarify. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. It was always so nice to have Jesus around. When he was around, his disciples felt safe and comfortable. Before, when he was about to leave, he called them together and he told them, I'm going to leave you, but don't be afraid. I'm returning for you. Jesus is that kind of individual who cares for people, who doesn't want us to be afraid in the face of death or loss. And he promises us, don't be afraid. I go to prepare a place for you and I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. There is a fork in the road. There is a choice you all have to make. When I was in England, when I first got there, and I had a preaching appointment in a church in Croydon in South London, the pastor sent me a map how to get to Croydon. Now, I followed the map and enjoyed myself on the M1, and then I was supposed to go on to the a23 to get to Croydon but I didn't realize that the road had forked and I had taken the wrong road and it was difficult to get off or to find where I was and the thing about England is that most people don't know where the church is you've got to know where the pub is and I didn't know where the pubs were so everybody I asked sent me further and further. I got to the church three hours late. The fork in the road. God has given to us a map. It's called the Bible. We need to read it and to follow it in order to get the results that he has promised. 
Listen to what is promised to us in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, living, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trump. The dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now this is the mystery of the gospel. We shall be changed. Those who put their trust and hope in Jesus Christ, even though we experience death in this life, the risen Christ has the power to resurrect those who put their trust in him and follow him. And so he offers to us today life. He said there are two ways. The broad way, you can carry whatever you want to the broad way. But there's a, that leads to death. The narrow way, he says, is a little more, calls for a little more sacrifice. God has given to us a choice. The broad way that leads to death or the narrow way that leads to life everlasting. So funerals don't have the last word. Life everlasting has the last word. Life everlasting in Jesus Christ. And I say to all of us today who sorrow and grieve, choose life, choose Jesus. The future is better than the present.
Heavenly Father, as we are hoping to get our brother to his final resting place, we are not saying we see a good way, but until we meet them. We pray that you give us the blessing of peace in the midst of peace. We thank you for your love. We thank you that this death of our love is only freedom from the mortal, from the mortal world of the We honor the memory of living whom you have given to us and have taken away and sleep. We may that great day when you raise us with him in life and triumph. And we shall stand before you in the glory of your heaven. In the mighty name of God. As we are about to take this boy to the final resting place, where we sleep for 10 years ago, give us your help. Amen. Father gives to me the company. 
I will never turn away any longer believe in me. He who is Jesus Christ and the dead will also give me life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy hear our prayer, forgive us our sins, and at our last hour let us not fall away from you. Ensure in certain hope of resurrection to eternal life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother, Ernest Livingston. And we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. But when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother, Ernest Livingston, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who having finished your course in faith now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life of those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. Let light perpetual shine upon him. May in all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. him the golden morning is fast approaching. The golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shades lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fear of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, that light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us depart in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hi, well finally, the lights are up. I think the camera's gonna work. I think I got the keyboard and mic issue solved. So this is just a series of some videos of hymns I've been wanting to do. So I'll start with one of the ones I remember very young and really loved. And of course, the older you get, the more you can really dig into those lyrics. We shall meet on the 